So yesterday we heard the news that the Alabama Supreme Court considers embryos to be children. So let's look at some of the fall the fallout of that ruling. So this is from Axios. It says House GOP rushes to distance themselves from the Alabama IVF ruling. Alabama House Republicans are quickly pushing back on an Alabama Supreme Court ruling restricting access to fertility treatments with one GOP lawmaker already planning a legislative response. Why it matters. Reproductive health care has been the central issue for House Democrats Mm -hmm. as they try to win back the GOP held suburban swing district. We should do everything we can to protect IVF for women everywhere. Representative Nassie Mace, um, a Republican from South Carolina, told Axios, we are currently drafting a resolution to express our sentiment and then looking at legislation, legislative options. Mace has variably criticized and supported her party's pro-life positions, often warning that overly strict policies will cost the GOP key elections. How are you going to criticize and support? Th- that's where they're trying to sit on the fence. No, you're either for women having the rights to choose what they want to do with their bodies, or you don't. You can't straddle the fence on this. Okay, what they're saying. House Republicans from districts President Biden won in 2020 also also pushed back. Representative Nick Lalota of New York, a Republican in New York, said in a statement to Axios, the ruling goes too far. While Representative Athi De Esposito of New York said it will rob countless Americans of the joys of family life. Representative Don Bacon, a Republican in Nebraska, told Axios he wants to give those who want to be moms the, um, that opportunity. Therefore, I do not support restrictions on IVF. So this person says, I'm troubled by and oppose the ruling. I support women and families who choose IVF to bring life into this world. They have my love and respect, says Mark Molinero, a Republican from New York. Zoom in. The Alabama Supreme Court ruled late last week that frozen embryos created through IVF are legally considered children. That has resulted in Alabama clinics pausing IVF treatments out of concerns that doctors or patients to face potential criminal prosecution. The fallout is the fallout is about to be felt. The repercussions are about to go far and wide. And Republicans, <laughs> I know that they are scrambling. Okay, so this is from the BBC. IVF ruling, what does this mean for fertility patients? So let's dive a little bit deep. So we already know that the Supreme Court said that embryos are children. All right, so that means that a person could be held liable for accidentally destroying them. And this has opened up a new front in the U.S. battle over reproductive medicine. The decision has thrown the future of IVF treatments in the state into doubt with a host of healthcare providers in the state suspending the service. Medical experts and reproductive advocacy groups warned the ruling could have negative consequences for fertility treatments in Alabama and beyond. Some anti abortion groups applauded the ruling, arguing that embryos deserve greater legal protections. This is where they're going to have to have the Supreme Court jump in and rule if embryos are children. And that's going to throw a monkey wrench into the, um, you know, the conception argument. Like once the sperm hits the egg, is it a person? So this is what <laughs> I'm sure the Dems are about to start pushing for some lawsuits so that this gets up to the Supreme Court. It's going to be interesting to watch. Why did this lawsuit occur and what did the court rule? The case stems from a wrongful death lawsuit brought by three couples whose embryos were lost by um, at a fertility clinic in 2020. A patient had wandered into the place where the embryos were stored, handled them, and accidentally dropped them. As a result, the embryos were destroyed. The couple sought to sue the Center for Reproductive Medicine and the Mobile Infirmary Association under the state's wrongful death of a minor act. That law covers fetuses but did not specifically cover embryos resulting from IVF. A lower court had ruled that the embryos did not qualify as a person or child and that a wrongful death lawsuit could not move forward. But in its ruling, the Alabama Supreme Court sided with the couples and ruled that frozen embryos were considered children. The wrongful death law applied to all unborn children, regardless of their location, the decision said. Concurring with the majority opinion, Chief Justice Tom Parker wrote, 
even before birth. All beings have the image of God and their lives cannot be destroyed without effacing his glory. So we are once again just walking towards this theocracy where they want to use their Bibles to rule us and they are not, they're not being quiet about it. They said, F y'all separation of church and state. They said that loudly right here, the chief justice. And these people do not understand. And I, how do you become chief justice and you don't understand the long lasting consequences that's going to come to your state with this type of ruling? Okay, what are the implications for Alabama fertility patients? The ruling does not ban or restrict IVF. And in fact, the couples who brought the case actively sought out the procedure. But the decision may cause confusion about whether some aspects of IVF are legal under Alabama law, experts say. If an embryo is considered a person, it could raise questions about how clinics are allowed to use and store them. Elizabeth Smith, Director of State Policy at the Center for Reproductive Rights, told the BBC in a statement, not not all IVF embryos are used, nor can they be. To enact legislation granting legal personhood to embryos could have disastrous consequences for those um, for the use of IVF, a science many people rely on to build their families. Ambiguity over the law could also extend to patients themselves who may worry about whether the procedure remains available or legal. (laughs) The Medical Association of the State of Alabama said in a statement, the significance of this decision impacts all Alabamians and will likely lead to fewer babies, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and cousins as fertility options become limited for those who want a family. And I am hoping in these red states that the birth rate tumbles to hell. That's That's what they are pushing for. And yeah. That's, that's my hope. And I hope lots of people move away from these states. But I hope that they're not rushing to blue states where our reproductive rights gets, gets restricted because of them. Okay, how does this tie in with the U.S. abortion debate? When the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a nationwide right to abortion in 2022, it opened the door for states to make their own laws on the issue. Since the decision, Democratic-controlled states have expanded access, while Republican-controlled states have restricted it. Alabama already has a total ban on small abortion at all stages of pregnancy. The White House called the Alabama ruling exactly the type of chaos we expected when the Supreme Court overturned Roe and paved the way for politicians to dictate some of the most personal decisions families can make. Some abortion opponents are also watching this ruling closely. The question of when an embryo or a fetus is le- legally considered a person is a factor in many states' abortion restrictions, exactly what I was saying earlier. The Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative Christian legal group, described the Alabama ruling as a tremendous victory for life. No matter the circumstances, all human life is valuable from the moment of conception. See, this is what I was talking about. We are grateful the court correctly found that Alabama law recommend recognizes this found fundamental truth. So they are saying yes to theocracy, boo for um, separation of church and state, boo to that. Other Republicans are scrambling, trying to figure out how to respond to this. Candidates, including presidential contender Nikki Haley, are scrambling for coherent responses to last week's state Supreme Court decision that declared embryos children and those who destroyed them could be liable for wrongful death. Republicans are being pulled between their social conservatives in their party and their more moderate voters who could be decisive in the general election. The irony is that the U.S. Supreme Court ending the nationwide federal right to abortion in 2022 represented one of the most spectacular successes in the conservative movement's history. But for many Americans, the loss of such constitutional protections they may have taken for granted has ever since offered a huge political opening to Democrats and abortion right campaigners. So y'all know I've been watching this closely. It's going to be interesting to watch how Republicans scramble to make this make sense, especially since I am sure that pro-life people wanted to use IVF. And regardless, it it does become a struggle. What do you do with the, the leftover embryos? Once a family is complete, they've had enough children, what do you do? This is this is not over by far, but you guys jump in the conversation. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.
Orville, who, who was asked directly about this ruling and gave to me a bit of a confusing answer earlier. This is what he told reporters. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But, but IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for, that's for another conversation. People need to have that. We need more kids. We need the people to, to have the opportunity to have kids. Senator, what do you say to the women right now in Alabama who no longer have access to IVF who will not? Them. Well, well, that's a hard one. It really is. It's really hard because, uh, again, you want people to have that opportunity, and and that's what I was telling her. We need more kids. Uh, with all due respect, uh, what? <laughs> Caitlin, look, he had no idea what that that reporter was asking. None. This was that answer was so similar. It's like deja vu all over again for folks. Uh, around here. He had an almost identical answer uh, in 2020 uh, when he was running for the Senate when asked if he would uh, support an extension of the Voting Rights Act. Had no idea what it was and stammered around and stuttered around and was incoherent when trying to answer. He had no idea what that re reporter was talking about. He may have thought it was intravenous or something with Gatorade. I don't know. But he clearly had no idea. And that's just who he is. He didn't know the three branches of government. He doesn't he on your show uh, had to you had to argue with him about white nationalists being uh, racist. So this is what we've come to in this state. And it's a it's a sad state of affairs when the Republican leaders of this state, that's the face of the Republican Party uh, in Alabama.